Guys, this is Powerhouse Exotics, back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be working on my bioactive terrarium for my tr American Green Tree Frog, Bert. That's Cricket, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Um, he got kind of caught up in the eco-earth. But yeah, we're going to be starting out with this. It's equal to about 15 to 20 gallons. I don't know, it's plenty big enough for the tree frog, considering 10 gallons is the minimum. So he'll be happy in here. And um, just in case you're wondering, yes, I'm back at my house. And yes, my room is an absolute disaster because I'm working on this massive tank right here. Uh, stay tuned for that video. So I've just got stuff scattered all over the place. i got loom bands, uh, pellet guns. That water jug is full of salt water for the hermit crabs, which I have moved over here. And yeah, this is a little just a carrying cage that broke on the in the process. So yeah, we're working on getting that all cleaned up. Oh yes, and just in case you're wondering, there's my last bioactive build. Um, Damien the barking tree frog. He's loving it. He's hiding under a plant right now. And that's Copy's tank, who is the next one to get an upgrade. Um... But yeah, I got his lights out right now because it's kind of hot in here and I had to turn the AC off because uh, it'll be annoying in the background. It'll be annoying in the background is what I meant to say. And uh, yeah, it'll be getting on you guys' nerves and I doubt you want that. So, okay, today we're going to start off with how I'm improving my soil mixture. And yes, I need to vacuum. Yes, I have pothos in the plant. Yes, that's hamster shavings over there that spilled and I haven't vacuumed up yet. And those are blinds, by the way, and there's a fishing pole. And yeah. So today we're talking about how I'm perfecting my mixture. Um, right now it's the exact same mixture I had in the last video. So it's a little bit of uh, Scott's organic topsoil, a little bit of play sand, a little bit of cocoa fiber, some cocoa husk and sphagnum moss. But I added a lot more cocoa husk, or not cocoa husk, cocoa fiber this time from Bert's old tanks. It had some, uh, you know, it'll have bacteria in it, which is good for the plants. And he's pooped in it. He's, he's kind of had that soil in there. Um, Changed out every once in a while, so let's say it's a few weeks old. I kind of just, uh, I get like a, I have a little cat litter scooper that's dedicated to the reptiles. I don't use the cat litter scooper for the frogs and stuff. I have their dedicated one that I kind of just sift through and get out any dead crickets and stuff. But yeah, this is kind of uh, older, and yeah, it'll work out good. I'm also going to be adding a little bit more of uh, play sand. This is just regular play sand, nothing added. It, I've used it for my hermit crabs. It's, it's you know, very, you know, it's very. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's, yeah, it's just good for your tank is what I should have said. I'm just going to add a little bit more of that. Make the you know, be able to drain a little bit more. This is a cool whip container. So, I don't know. Whatever it's equal to, it's a... Uh, I don't know how big this container is. I don't care about measurements. So, yeah, just... If you have one of those, about a container and a half extra. I'm going to get this little cricket out. And uh, I'll get back to you whenever it is finished. Now that I've got all that nicely uh, blended together, uh, just remember it doesn't have to look exactly like this. You can experiment with your own mixtures. Uh, here, I'm, I'm kind of out of breath right now. I was kind of just scrambling around looking for supplies, so sorry if I sound out of breath. But um, I'm trying to replicate the native South Carolina soil we have around here because that uh, the tree frog that's going in here is native to my state. So, yeah, the environment around me is good enough for them which is it's kind of keeping native species i make sure it's legal it's legal up here make sure it's legal in your area but uh the one good thing about it is um it's always the right temperature for them it's always the right humidity for them i mean depending on your home but usually it's around the right temperature and humidity for them i keep it a little bit cooler in my room but uh so it stays around springtime temperatures in here for the outside of my state so yeah it's perfect for him um and he's flared up right now i just had to show that off real quick it's kind of cool uh, Olaf the uh, the uh, platinum better. Now he's turned around where I can't see him flared up. But yeah. Anyways, the next step is the drainage layer. So we're just going to set this aside. We won't be needing it quite yet. For the drainage layer, we're going to be needing plastic egg crate. You can also use pebbles. Um, and uh, weed blocker. You can also use very thin fine mesh. like um, Sort of like what's on the top of an exoterra. That kind of uh, mesh. Like this kind of mesh is what I mean, by the way. Uh, just in case you're wondering. And yeah, you can see Damien back there. But yeah, if you're using pebbles, you'll just spread them around the bottom of the tank. Or you can also use clay balls or hydro balls or whatever you want to call them. Um, and you'll put weed blocker over the top of them and then start adding your soil and all that. But I like to use egg crate because uh, when you're designing the backgrounds, the egg crate stays in place a lot better than pebbles does. And uh, it's a little bit easier to work with if you ask me because... I don't have a shop vac to be able to vacuum it all out, then place the pebbles down, and that just fell. I don't have a vacuum to be able to do that, so, uh, yeah. Once again, I apologize for the absolute mess in the background. Um, that'll be sorted soon. I've just had to, whenever this monstrosity is done. I don't even know what I'm going to put in it yet. I'm thinking Timor monitors. I've been wanting monitors for forever, and I feel like that's a 
pretty decent beginner monitor. Ackies would be best, but uh, yeah, I don't want to have to deal with the temperatures of Ackies right now because I know they, they need it extremely hot, and uh, Timor's also need it extremely hot, but uh, it, it's they need it a, a kind of hot that I can I can safely I can actually I know I can provide for them. So yeah, uh, those will be on the way before long, and uh, I might get something else. Comment down below if you know any, anything else. This is a four and a half foot tall by three foot by three foot. Um, it's gonna have a front opening door. It's gonna have a screen top. It's gonna have a. It's gonna be bioactive too. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that backdrop. I'm gonna be watching a lot of Serpa design to figure that out. Serpa designs another YouTube who I highly a YouTuber who I highly recommend. But yeah, I will get back to you whenever this thingy is done, which will take forever. And um, also if you're doing an egg crate thing, I might I might want to mention first. You're gonna want to cut it out to the size of your tank. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller than. You're going to, you know, put it over the top of your tank like this. And you'll cut it out. Once it's on top of your tank, you'll cut out a square that's about the size of your tank. But make it go in one extra of these little squares. So then it'll fit perfectly. Then after that, you'll have to build little, like, kind of, I don't know how to describe it. But after you get your actual square in, I'll just throw up a picture of what it should look like um, for my last terrarium build. Um, and we'll get back to you anyways with this one. So, yeah, there's the picture of the last one I did. Okay, now that you're back from that, um, we will get back to you. I've been saying we'll get back to you. That's that's just that should just be my catchphrase by now. I say it a lot, but we will get back to you whenever this is done. See you soon. Hey guys, and in the last video, I didn't show you till the end. I really forgot. To mention this you'll want to add a little bit of activated carbon you can use charcoal or terrarium carbon this is aquarium carbon and just pour some of that into your uh, to your mixture there's a tape measure in there I'll get that out in just a second but just pour a little bit and I'll mix it up in just a second that doesn't need to be on camera uh, you know how to mix stuff hopefully so yeah um now that that's out of the way I'll get back to you whenever the thing is finished bye bye okay guys so when it's done it should look somewhat like this you can put um, this one I meant earlier by these little ledge things I was having trouble describing. Uh, these little things right here. You can put them all the way around. You can put three and leave one the back part open, which is what I did on my other tank. You can put them all the way around. Or you can put just one on that side, one on that side, leave these two blank. I just put it this way because it was the simplest. And uh, I was trying to save egg crate so I can use it again because egg crate is expensive. So, yeah, that is going to be the um part of the drainage layer um, i'll get back to you whenever i'm gonna make the next part now that that is in place you'll be needing your um whatchamacallit weed blocker or if you use the mesh it'll work but yeah i'll get back to you whenever this is cut out and put down in there and um or i'll just tell you when we get there see you soon okay so it's now cut to size um you'll want to leave a little bit extra so it when you put it in there it'll uh it won't fit entirely. It'll kind of go up a little bit along the. Let me see if I can get it in place. I'll get back to you whenever it's in place. This is what I meant when I said you just cut a little bit extra so it can go up along the side of the thing. This will prevent the uh, dirt and stuff from getting down to the cracks or the. It's kind of echoing now that I'm inside that tank. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be gluing this in place now. You don't have to, but it can always be an extra precaution. I'll put glue in all four corners of it and in between each corner of it. So yeah, I'll put about eight spots of glue on there. So, um, I'll see you whenever I start working on the backdrop now because um, I'm not going to film me gluing it. So, see you soon. I've said that so many times now. So, I'm not going to say it again. Okay, guys. So, now we're going to be working on the background. Um, first, I'm going to add some of this Gorilla Glue. Make sure you get the regular kind. I tried the clear and it does not work as you would want it to. Tori, please get out of here. But, yeah, I'll get back to you when it is applied and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, guys. So, I actually let the. Uh, the glue set overnight and it should be good so um yeah we're just gonna tip this bad boy up and we'll start um adding the potting soil and adding the plants see you in the next part okay guys so i'd say it turned out pretty good um tank's a little bit cloudy so let's just kind of get an inside look way better than the last one yeah that regular gorilla glue certainly is better um you can kind of just scrape some of this off but uh your animals are going to be naturally kind of getting all this off as you go along so no troubles if they can't get it off but yeah that foam there's pretty sturdy so yeah. time to add the soil mixture now okay now we're going to start pouring in the potting soil that's the same mixture i used for the background um 
I would recommend you add a little bit more of the actual topsoil itself. Um, but we'll be adding more stuff to this. This is just the base layer that you're going to be adding down. You'll want a nice deep layer of it. Um, I want it to fill up that little gap I left in the back for the substrate, so it's going to be using quite a bit of it. And I'm actually going to move this egg crate up the way because you can see the reflection of it, and it's you could see the reflection when it was over there. So I'm just going to set it up here against the fish tanks. See? Uh, sorry, guys, this is kind of getting a little bit repetitive, but uh, I'll kind of just uh, catch up with you whenever I'm done. Okay, guys, so I ended up using what was left in the bucket. Um, so yeah, it was about, this is about a five-gallon bucket, so it was about two and a half gallons worth of the substrate. Um, the drainage layer there is kind of looking awkward but it'll it'll fix itself before long i i glued it too high up so now there's a little bit of a gap but when this is all set up and set down like it should be it shouldn't it should be hardly noticeable but yeah i'm pretty proud of that background um now we'll get to adding the plants okay so for plants we're just going to be using golden pothos um i have them sitting here in this uh this is just this old little quarantine fish tank the dirty water because that's good for them yeah it, it, it kept them alive while i was waiting for them so um um, I'll, I'll just skip to whenever uh, they're out of the tank. Okay, so we've got a lot of plants to work with here. Um, or by a lot of plants, I mean a lot of the same exact plant, none of the no new species or anything. But yeah, they're in that little container, so they're not going back in there. I'll get back to you whenever I get them planted in a way that I find appealing. Okay, guys, so that's what I went with. Uh, tree frogs kind of like a lot of clutter to hide in and blend in with. Um, uh, so, yeah, um... That's kind of what I went for, so you can easily go into any of these plants and hide. Um, now, for your next step, you're going to want sphagnum moss. Uh, just regular long-fibered sphagnum moss. You find it at Home Depot. Uh, nothing added to it. I've been needing to get my other tanks just fine. Um, what you want to do is you're going to kind of sprinkle this around on the forest floor. Kind of the forest floor. There's my dress World toys. I collect those, so, yeah. I'm just going to scatter these around before make sure they look they go underneath the leaves so it looks a little bit better um you can leave little patches uh, that don't have sphagnum moss you know a little bit more realistic if you want to and once that once that sphagnum moss gets wet it'll look a lot better right now it's kind of dry it kind of looks like dead grass but um yeah the next component is cocoa husk now you can use uh you can also use things like orchid bark or some other kind of little material similar to this but uh I'm going to use this because this is all I really had available. Kind of just spread that around. Make sure it doesn't cover any of the leaves. Make sure you kind of push it into the ground a little bit. You could also just mix that up with the sphagnum moss before you add it on here. That'll also work and be just do just fine. Which I'm just going to kind of push it in there. Get it all figured out. This will be good food for the cleanup crew, which... Um, I'm also going to be adding dwarf white isopods to this setup like I have my other one, but for now, it's all, or until I get more of those, um, I'm using darkling beetles, which also kind of serve as an extra food whenever they, uh, or not as an extra food source whenever they lay their eggs and create more mealworms for me. So, yeah. Looks quite nice. Kind of just push up some of these leaves. Oh, crap. Um, I unburied one of them. A little smaller plant. But, yeah. But yeah, that should be good. I don't think I'm doing too bad for my second bioactive terrarium. Next up, we have dirty fish tank water or water from one of the fish tank filters. I kind of squeeze some in there. It's going to have a lot of beneficial bacteria in it, which is going to be super good for the plants. And uh, oh, we've got it on the, we've got it on the off. There you go. Spray the background down a little bit. Okay, now I'm just kind of going to take the top off of it and uh, pour some in there. So, yeah, I'll begin. I'll add a little bit more water to it later, but yeah. We will add the tree frog next. Here's the man of the hour. This is Bert, my American green tree frog, and we are going to see how he likes his new uh, home. This was his, uh, he, did, he did live in this tank prior to this. He hasn't just been living in here for forever. <laughs> for forever he's lived in this tank for about a year but it wasn't bioactive and i wasn't really happy with having to clean it all the time and uh amphibians need it quite moist so it's kind of hard to keep up with that um so yeah 
I'll get back to you whenever I'm adding him to the tank. Okay, he is now somewhat in the tank. Okay, he's on the TV now. Bert, come here. I'm gonna kind of just, uh, we're having technical difficulties. I'll get back to you in a moment. Okay, so there he is. Um, it's kind of difficult to get him. Um, yeah. He should be happy in here. Um, oh yeah, before I forget to, we're going to be adding another oak log in there for him, like I used for my other tree frog, uh, Damien's tank. Okay, do not get out again, because I really don't feel like catching you again. Okay. He's got a little tree you can go into. But yeah, that's his bioactive setup. Um, I'll probably add more plants eventually. Uh, some more, you know, just stuff for him. Uh, but yeah, there he is. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to roll some B-roll of uh, his uh, tank setup and uh, the process of it. So, um, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Next, we're going to be doing my 18 by 18 by... It's either 24 or 36 Exoterra. Um, for my green and old compy, we'll work on that next after, you know. So, uh, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. And, oh my god, not again. Anyways, I'm going to roll some clips and uh, I'll have to recapture this little guy. Bye bye